There are new signs this morning. People looking to buy a home are going to have a hard time getting what they want, despite talk of a cool down. Royal LePage has raised its home price forecast for this year. It sees prices rising 15 percent led by markets like Toronto and Vancouver. Meanwhile, our next guest expects higher interest rates to take a bite out of purchasing power. In fact, he's expecting variable rates to test 4% by early next year. Robert Kapsik is a senior economist with BMO Capital Markets, and he joins us now. Robert, thanks very much for being with us. Nice to have you. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Let's, let's just start with that headline from Royal LePage today. Does it surprise you to see a forecast of higher home prices this year versus last year at a time when we're already seeing, you know, big push by the federal government for housing affordability and this expectation of continued rising interest rates? Not really, and I, I'd honestly be a little bit careful looking at the the home price forecast for 2022 on an annual basis, just simply because the arithmetic underlying that forecast is is very much in favor of price growth for this year. And 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 what I really mean there, um, to put it simply, is that because we've had so much momentum in the second half of 2021 and into the start of this year, even if we do get some sequential price declines from here on out, the average for 2022 is still going to look pretty strong. So. Um, I, I, I think there's a lot more going on below the surface than just that headline number. Interesting. Well, certainly where rates go from here is one of the big ones to be watching for. And, and after seeing the Bank of Canada uh, make its most aggressive single meeting move in more than two decades, uh, many on Bay Street, uh, including yourself, are expecting uh, the Bank of Canada to continue raising rates. Um, I alluded to your, your variable rate call of, of possibly touching 4% by next year. Can you just walk us through your thinking right now? Sure. So we've already come into an environment where where sub two percent mortgage rates are are now a thing of the past, and a lot of people do still have you know sixty or ninety day rate holds on their mortgages, and they're still kind of in that world. But as we get into into the summer, we're going to be very much into the you know two to three percent range for variable rates and pushing four percent, if not slightly above, for five year fix, just given what's happened with with five year bond yields and and the momentum on that front. And I mean, with respect to the Bank of Canada, which obviously is the driver of those variable rates, we're looking at another 50 basis point increase in June, 50 basis point increase in July, probably another 25 basis points in the, in the fall. So right there, that's another 125 basis points coming uh, for, for, for variable, variable rate mortgages by the end of this year. Um, and it's, 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 it's a pretty big bite for a housing market that through the pandemic was really pricing itself off of mortgage rates in the one and a half percent or so range. Yeah, and uh, and obviously, I mean, woulda, coulda, shoulda, the uh, opportunity to lock in at a fixed rate uh, seems to have passed some people by. Um, you know, those variable rates might go up and people might stay with variable rate mortgages just because if you go out and try to get, you know, a fixed rate mortgage at this point in time, uh, obviously, uh, those are a lot more costly, which gets us to the purchasing power equation here, Robert, in terms of this idea of more housing affordability, given what you're watching and the numbers you're seeing, even in the face of what was just announced in the federal budget, do you think there will be more housing affordability going forward? Uh, it's it's going to be tough, and, and the mortgage rate backdrop that we're we're talking about is going to be the biggest challenge, I think. And I mean, just just I mean, do some simple arithmetic with a mortgage calculator. If you take a market that's that's priced off of a one and a half percent mortgage rates, and you change that to three and a half percent, which I think we'll will be at pretty soon. If you hold everything else constant, that you know the price of the house you're buying to hold a constant monthly payment probably has to come down around fifteen percent or so. And I mean, not to say that prices are going to correct that much because there are a lot of offsets um, just in terms of down payment size, in terms of income gains and, and drawing on a pretty big cash of savings. But the arithmetic in a world where, where affordability and housing valuations were already stretched um, makes it pretty challenging for, for prices to keep running. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if we do see some some cooling over the next six to 12 months. Okay, Robert, we only have about a minute left. Obviously, we've talked a lot about the supply part of the equation here, and that's what many think is necessary for a more evenly priced housing market in this country. We did get some housing starts data this morning. Uh, those numbers in March trended a little lower, but we're still talking about extremely elevated levels. In your opinion, are we already starting construction on uh, as many homes as we can? In other words, if we're trying to tackle the supply issue is that already something that uh, that is being done as as best as possible 
pretty much that's it. I mean, we're we're looking at about 340,000 housing units under construction in Canada now. That's a record by a wide margin. If you adjust for population size, we're we're pushing record levels as well. Pretty pretty similar to what we saw in the building boom during the 1970s. And I mean, commendable as it is, the federal budget's goal to double this rate of construction because we do have demographic demand issues. It, it, the reality is, it just it just physically can't happen. And and I say that because the job market, especially in construction, is already extremely tight and pushing capacity. We're at a record low jobless rate within the construction sector, and we do have a you know, a, 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 a big shortage of skilled trades in this country. So even if fundamentally we wanted to double that rate of construction over the next decade, it's just, it seems really hard to imagine a world where we can actually physically build that many homes. All right, lots to consider there. Thanks for your perspective, Robert. Robert Kapsik joining us, Senior Economist at BMO Capital Markets on the housing market.